I think it was somewhat of a political move. Got it. Interesting. All right. Best director? Is that are we going? Are we going yeah. Broadway? We can move on to best director. What a category! Can I just say that? I mean. Yeah. I can say what the hell. This is the most unacceptable uh, snub in the entire yes. thing. Oh, the fact Nolan. that my boy Christopher Nolan is not on here. Yes. Yeah. The winner of this category did not even get nominated. <laughs> and yeah, I will. I well, how do you feel? Which one would you take out? Which one I take out? I would take I out. I take yeah, I know which yeah. one I take out as well. I would take out two. Okay. And I would sub in Christopher Nolan and Ben Affleck for The Town. Mm. Um, I very much enjoy The Town. What a great movie. I've yeah. seen it twice now, and yeah. Also, the, the reason I like Affleck is it's clear this is his second film. I loved his first one. Yeah. I've loved mm -hmm. his second one. A lot of people don't give him credit for being a good actor. I think he is a good actor, but he's not a great actor. And I think that's where he realizes his limitations. Yeah. If you realize how many cuts he does to Jeremy Renner when a normal... The normal focus of the story should theoretically be on the Affleck character. He realizes great things are going on over here. <laughs> okay, things are going on over here. Let's take this shot. Yeah. And I like that, that he is the protagonist. He's enough. Yeah. Like, Don't get me wrong. If I was a director and there was a movie with sex scenes, I would make myself the protagonist as well. Yeah. I'd be like, okay, Ray's starring here. But he realizes that... He uses his ensemble very well, well and pacing is his excellent. His character in that movie also is very strict, I feel like. As much, I mean, he's conflicted and all that kind of stuff, but Jerry Renner, Jeremy Renner is kind of like the crazy, like, mm -hmm. the more dynamic character. And I think he plays the straight, hold together the story, the story character, like, fairly well. I think he's, he's good at that, but, like, not so much at the other stuff, but... I, that is one of the movies that I saw with the talk back with him explaining it, and he, he's basically he was very humble and talking about it. Like mm -hmm. he likes directing. He basically knows he's made some bad career decisions. Yeah. Who hasn't? And, yeah, but and he's owned up to it. He knows that, and he, um, yeah. No, I think that that would. So who would you take out? I'm taking things? out the Coens yeah. for yes. True Grit yes. okay, that's because yeah. they're remaking a movie. And while it was good, it was very good, and it was substantially different from the first one. It was substantially different from the first one that they made kind of their own movie, which I liked. Okay. I'm still not sure it was the best True Grit. Okay. And here's my thought, and here's why I think Christopher Nolan should be a slam dunk. Director, for me, everyone thinks it's who made the best movie. I view it as a statistic known in fantasy sports as VORP, which is value over replacement player. Meaning... Wow. Okay, continue. If I... If Let's take all these directors' movies, then let's hand Ray O'Brien the same script and the same means in terms of money, actors, locations, yeah. equipment. How would Ray's movie compare to their movie? Yeah. Right. Some movies are more difficult to make than yeah. others. And there's no way I could have made Inception anywhere near what Christopher Nolan made Inception. Yeah. I could have made The Kids Are All Right possibly <laughs> as good as they made it. If you said, now, I'm not saying it's a bad movie. <laughs> I'm saying if you give me Julianne Moore and Annette Benning and Mark yeah. Ruffalo, some yeah. films direct themselves. Yeah. It's just, like, I've directed before. All I did was cast and say go. Yeah. And that's I basically agree. what I think some of these movies come out to. I would also, the other one I would cut is I would cut David O. Russell for The Fighter. Yeah. I thought he did a good job, but I thought it was a lot of him doing good casting, getting some good actors in there and just saying, and, go have okay, your way. That's something I'm going to throw in the talk about. He didn't even get the actors. Mark Wahlberg got all of them. So he didn't even do his own no, casting, which is half the directing he job. He didn't. Mark, he, Mark wow. Wahlberg was a producer, and he went and got Christian Bale. And, like, he, he actually said, because this movie was nine years, the fighter was nine years in the making. Right. He actually went up. They had, like, three different full casts at different per time periods with different directors tied to it. And then, basically, he signed on David. They had a whole different director signed on, and he was talking to David O. Russell as a friend about the movie. And David O. Russell like agreed with all of his visions, so he ended up firing the other director and signing on David O. Russell just because he agreed with everything he wanted to do. So I guess in that sense, I would agree that he could probably drop off the list, considering that I think a lot of the creative vision of that movie was more of Mark Wahlberg right. rather than David O. Russell. So I, I could I could go with that. So I guess I guess for me, my my pick, you know, and I, I guess it's a little bit of the. Black Swan. I would pick. I would pick Darren Ar Aronofsky. I think he was. I thought it was, it was you know phenomenal. Just See, I feel like that's a movie that like 
right <laughs> you couldn't make either no i mean no i agree no of the nominated people darren aronofsky should definitely win yeah he's hands down my pick of the nominated people i'm just so angry over the nolan snub that i'm not even going yeah. to that being said he probably won't win let's be honest no well, he won't it's got to be fincher or hooper, or hooper. Yeah. yeah one of those two which once again those are those are character driven movies which relies on the acting and yes the directly i mean the director get gets that out of the actor for the most part, but with stuff like this, I mean, with the King's Speech, Colin Firth made that movie, he whether, totally like, did. yeah, so it, it wasn't so much Tom Hooper, I don't feel like, and then The Social Network, I feel like Aaron Sorkin made that movie, like, the dialogue is so quick and good, and, like, the acting rather than David, I mean, I think David Finch did a good job, but. I've got a question about The Social Network, and we didn't really, this is probably more of a best picture thing, but mm-hmm. it's also the director, I guess, I'm going to address it here. It was kind of, I felt like it was kind of like a Macbeth, the social network, of like you have a guy who's like yeah. rising to power, kind of cutting down people around him, screwing him out, mm-hmm. and then um, kind of like at the end, everything's kind of closing in on him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, my question is, who was I supposed to feel sorry for in this movie? Because I didn't feel sorry for anybody. But go ahead. Who am I supposed to feel sorry for? You're not really supposed to. It was just yeah. telling a story. Yeah. You're not supposed to, like... I, the person I felt sorry for was uh, Eduardo. I did too. Yeah, I think that's the only one that you can actually feel sorry for. I think they tried to make a victim out of him, and it's because the book that it was based on was written with him as the main consultant. How is he not a victim? <laughs> like, he basically got effed. Like, did he get screwed? Yes, but is, I feel that, nece- did he necessarily not have it coming to him? I mean, he should have... He should have been smarter, yes, but, like, I mean, if you think about it, like, Ray, let's say, like, I mean, you, when you're young and in college, you trust your best friend. Yeah. Like, how the hell is he supposed to know that was going to happen? I want to be very... I probably would have done the same thing, like... Here's... He's got three billion dollars. He is the second youngest billionaire, only to Mark Zuckerberg in the world. I have a hard set rule of I don't throw pity parties for myself. I won't pity myself. And the transit property of that is I will not pity anybody that I would switch places with. And since I would sp- switch places with him in two seconds flat, he cannot have my pity. Okay. He's better for having known Zuckerberg because without Zuckerberg, he doesn't have three billion dollars. Yeah. Unless he's getting that from as they whatever he's doing predicting oil futures based upon yeah. the weather yeah. patterns or whatever. I guess this is a little bit of a tangent. I wonder, you know, the Golden Globes, the King's Speech received a lot of you know recognition. I wonder if at the Academy Awards there'll be a little bit more of a split between the King's Speech and the Social Network. Um, just, you know, the, the King's Speech kind of stole the show, but I feel like maybe, you know... Didn't the Social Network win the Golden Globes? The King's Speech won at SAG. The King's Speech won the best cast at SAG. Social Network won at the Golden Globes. Yeah. But regardless, both of those, I mean, they, I are mean, respectable awards. Yeah, so I think gonna... the King's, yeah, the King's Speech won all... I just, maybe it didn't win Best Picture, but I think it did pretty well. But, you know, yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think yeah. that, you know, I, I think that at the Academy Awards, there may be more of a split between the two. Of the two of them, I'd like to see Social Network win. King's Speech... The do, only- you think, do you think that Best Picture and Best Director will be paired? Like, Hi, it's either going to be Tom question. Hooper and, and, Best, and King's Speech or Social Network and David Fincher, or do you think they would split it? If it was a split, I would say it would be... Um, it would be King's Speech and Fincher. I think Hooper is a substantial underdog to Fincher. Yeah. I think yeah. Fincher just has more clout because he's done great stuff in the past. Yeah. Um, I agree. I think Darren Aronofsky, like, that was just, that movie was just freaking oh, ridiculous. Oh, he should. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that they're going to be smart with their picks, but seeing as they don't, I don't like most of their should. nominations, I don't think they will be. It's not like out of the past six years, four of the times the best director is one for best and best, same, best. Like, director, usually it's best. paired. It's usually yeah. If you go back 20 years, that number probably becomes 16 out of 20 does. or something. It like does. it's, subst- the, the times I remember it happening are Ang Lee won for Brokeback Mountain when they picked Crash Foolishly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Steven Spielberg won for Saving Private Ryan when they picked Shakespeare Love Foolishly. <laughs> Every time they make a mistake on the best picture, they get the best director yeah. right. Um, <laughs> with the exception of... Gladiator won Best Picture, and I thought you could easily have given Ridley Scott the Best Director, but they gave it to Steven Soderbergh for Traffic, which I wasn't totally against, but yeah. I was against. Yeah. Um, I thought Ridley, 
Ridley Scott. I thought Gladiator was a harder picture to direct. Yeah. I mean, you got that's a boatload of extras, a lot of yeah. F special effects you got to deal with. Russell Crowe throwing phones at people. <laughs> um, de degree of difficulty, I think, is something that needs to be factored in when you're I, giving I agree. best director. And I do hope that you know Christopher Nolan finally someday does get recognition because. He has it coming. Man. The thing is, it's not even... This year, the snub this year is bad enough, but it's just year after... It's after they did it for Dark Knight. Yeah. And then before that, he probably should have had one for either Memento or Prestige. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like... He's so great. They never he gave... Just, he doesn't produce crap. He doesn't create crap. Like, I've liked every one of his movies. I've not seen Insomnia. But that's his movie, right? Yeah. That's I've it. seen all of his movies. Every single one is great. Insomnia is the only one that isn't a total wow. Yeah. And even it was very good. I can't say that it wasn't good. Yeah. Um, but, like, the the Academy never never acknowledged uh, what, Alfred Hitchcock. Never even got a nomination. <laughs> and I think after that, they should look at themselves and say, you stupid idiots, <laughs> let's not let this happen again. Yeah. When somebody is doing great things and is establishing a cult following, and you might, it might not be your kind of thing... But let the record show that you acknowledge greatness. Not even greatness. cult following. How much did Inception grow? Oh, no. When I say Dark cult, Knight, I mean, yeah, like, like, a strong, rapid yeah, following. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay. 